when the movement started in uh, Spain on May 15th, but some, uh, some people put a big uh, banner in uh, the plaza, in Puerta del Sol, in the center of uh, Madrid, and, and the banner said, what time is it? Are the Greeks sleeping? Because you see, for, for about one year or so, in Spain, many people were thinking, uh, there's been eight general strikes in uh, Greece. What is happening in Spain? Nothing is uh, happening. Uh, and this was also uh, um, illustrated by another banner that was in, in the Puerta del Sol that said, the Greeks and the French struggle, the Spaniards win at football. There was, there was genuinely a sense of uh, frustration that uh, the conditions are the similar. We are also suffering from high youth unemployment and so on, and nothing is happening in, uh, in Spain. So when the, when the movement started in Greece five days uh, later, on the 20th of May, they also put a big banner with the Spanish uh, flag uh, colors. Might, some of you might have seen it. And the banner said, uh, we are not sleeping. <laughs> Uh, what time is it? It is time for all of them to go, meaning all the politicians, Hello. all the bankers. And a few days later they put another banner in uh, Syntagma Square in, uh, in Athens. The banner was in Italian and said, <coughs> and said, shh, don't make any noise, you might awake the Italians. <laughs> You can see it's, a, it's an interesting point that uh, there, is, there is an immediate internationalist or international character to this uh, movement. It is true, for instance, that the, the conditions in the Arab countries are not the same as the conditions in, in uh, southern European countries. That's quite clear. You know, we're not fighting a, a dictatorship, that's for one. And even though there are sim similarities in socio-economic conditions, these, these are much worse in, in the Arab world. But there's no doubt that the Arab Revolution has had a profound impact in the psychology of the people who are now struggling in Spain, in Greece, and in other, in other parts. So the very idea of occupying a square and setting up a tent camp comes directly from uh, Tahrir Square. Uh, and we saw that also in uh, Wisconsin, in Madison, Wisconsin, in the United States. When, when, uh, when people called uh, the governor Hosni Walker, so you can, you can see that there's uh, the, the people around the world uh, watching uh, events that are developing in front of their own eyes minute by minute. They are identifying with these uh, movements, not only from the point of view of, uh, of sympathy and solidarity, but also from the point of view of these two, two ideas that I think uh, are common to all of these uh, uh, movements. One is that uh, the, the feeling, very deep-rooted feeling, that we are subject to events that we do not control. That uh, unelected uh, bankers, financiers and uh, capitalists are playing with our lives, with our jobs, with our future, and that we have no control over, over that. The movement in Spain is called for real democracy now. But uh, the second idea, which I think is even more important, is that we can do something about it through struggle, through, through mass action, through revolutionary action. Now the movement in uh, Spain calls itself Spanish uh, Revolution. That's, that's the hashtag that they're using on, on Twitter. Uh, it's not a revolution, if we have to be uh, on, honest and, and, and serious about what it is. But the fact that people who participate in it call it a revolution is, is also very significant, oh, I, I, I would say. And uh, there was another banner in Spain that uh, said, nobody expects the Spanish uh, revolution. Which is a reference, ref, reference to the famous Monty Python uh, sketch that uh, you might or not, or not be familiar with. But uh, I would say that this is very, very, very significant uh, events. You see, in, in Spain, the situation before this movement uh, emerged was the following. The economic recession has been particularly uh, harsh in uh, Spain. As a matter of fact, you couldn't really say that we have come out of the recession uh, yet. There is economic uh, growth, but a very, very uh, low pace. Uh, Spain was one of the countries where there was the biggest uh, housing uh, bubble before the, the recession, during the boom. Uh, for a long period of time, uh, I mean, in fact, in Spain, there was no economic recession for 18 years. At one point, uh, I think between uh, 30 and 40 percent of all new houses and all new jobs created in the European Union were being created in uh, Spain. And th this was all based on uh, speculation. Massive, massive expansion of uh, credit, not, not, uh, not, not only in Spain, but in Spain it was particularly uh, acute. 
And obviously when the recession uh, came, therefore, it was much more severe. Unemployment uh, levels have gone up from uh, 2 million to nearly 5 million in three years. I imagine that. That's, that's a lot of people who from night to day lose their jobs. As a result, they can no longer pay the mortgages. Hundreds of, <coughs> hundreds of thousands of people are losing their homes. But in Spain, you, you uh, stop paying a mortgage. Your bank, the, the bank keeps your house and you still owe the money to the bank. So you have, you have no job, no house, and you still owe all this money to the, to the bank. Youth, youth unemployment in Spain is about 45 to 50 percent. That means that one in every two uh, Spanish uh, youth have no uh, jobs. M many of these uh, young people who have university degrees speak uh, languages, they uh, work hard to be uh, highly qualified, and all of a sudden they find themselves with no, no future in front of their eyes. This is after a period in which they could get some uh, jobs, but these jobs were not, uh, not very good. Short-term, part-time uh, contracts. And, and for a period of time they talked about the, the mileuristas, the people who were working full-time job and er earning under, under 1,000 uh, euro. But now you can consider yourself lucky if you have a job like that. There was another banner in uh, Madrid. On the 15th of May, a uh, <coughs> demonstration that said violence is earning 600 euro a month. I mean, these are, these are people, <clears throat> I know, I know uh, quite a lot of uh, people in these uh, conditions, people who have a university degree, speak two languages, and they are working <clears throat> in a job, earning 600, full-time uh, job, earning 600 euro a month. Now think, think about uh, this, Is, isn't this similar to some of the conditions that led to the Tunisian uh, uprising? One, one of the reasons why the Spanish uh, movement has had so many uh, demonstrations outside of uh, Spain is because there are thousands, uh, tens of thousands of Spanish uh, youth who have had to emigrate to other European uh, countries to look for, for jobs. The situation in uh, Portugal is uh, similar but uh, worse. Than and in the month of uh, April there was a movement in Greece, in uh, Portugal, sorry, that was the precursor of the movement in uh, Spain. Uh, also organized uh, through social uh, media networks and uh, outside, of, outside of the official uh, party structures. The youth with casual uh, jobs, the casual uh, youth uh, generation, they, they call themselves. All the demonstration, they fixed the date. S similar to what they've seen is being done in the Arab countries. They advertise it through Facebook, Twitter and, and so on. To the surprise of the organizers, 200,000 youth demonstrated in uh, Portugal. In Spain there was another factor that led to this uh, movement. And that is that all the official uh, structures through which um, anger and discontent can be expressed were completely blocked. From a political uh, point of view, we have a government of the Socialist uh, Party, the government of Zapatero. Zapatero came to power as a left uh, reformist. I, I uh, remember at the time when Zapatero was elected, I, was in, I went to Italy for a, for a visit, and some, some people in the Italian Communist Party, they were saying, we would like to have a leader like uh, Zapatero in Spain, instead of what we have here. He came, he came to power in very particular circumstances, if you remember. There was a terrorist attack in Madrid in March, uh, when was it, 2004, and the government of uh, Aznar, the right-wing uh, government, that was extremely unpopular, first tried to blame the ETA Basque uh, nationalist organization. But in the space of 24 hours, people realized that this was a massive uh, lie, engineered in order to uh, push people to vote for the right uh, wing against terrorism and so on. And there, was, uh, and there was a massive, spontaneous movement of tens of thousands uh, of people who came out on the streets against the right wing uh, government. This was uh, two days before the general uh, election. And now in Spain there is a law, electoral law, that says that the day before the elections you cannot carry out any uh, election uh, propaganda, any political uh, activities are forbidden. Demonstrations are also forbidden. But on, on that uh, day, the day before the elections in 2004, tens of thousands of people spontaneously uh, marched on the streets, marched on the um, Popular Party uh, headquarters, marched on National Congress. Police couldn't do anything. 
And then on the Sunday they voted massively for the Socialist uh, Party. Even many people who usually vote for United uh, Left, which, the which is a coalition around the Communist uh, Party, voted for the Socialist Party in order to kick out uh, the right-wing uh, government. The Socialist Party, new uh, government, the first thing that Zapatero did was to, to, to bring back the troops from uh, Iraq. Uh, there had been a massive movement against the war in uh, Spain, millions of, uh, of people, and, and this was an extremely popular measure. People thought that Zapatero was really a left-winger. And at the beginning of his uh, mandate, he carried out some mild uh, left-wing uh, reforms of the kind that the left reformists like so much, particularly those that don't, do not cost any money. For instance, they legalized gay uh, marriages. And they, and they uh, massively clashed with the Catholic Church over this and other questions. But then, but then the recession came. Uh, and at the beginning, uh, Zapatero was trying to say, no, we, we are a bit better at managing uh, the crisis of capitalism. Look at what is happening in other countries. Uh, here we're not making so many cuts. But then, uh, but then the, the, the economic crisis started to hit. First it was uh, Greece, then uh, Ireland then uh, Portugal and was coming closer and closer to Spain and the financial uh, markets started to attack um, Spanish uh, debt uh, rating and one year ago uh, Zapatero received a phone call from uh, Angela Merkel and a phone call from uh, Obama 24 hours later he went to the Spanish uh, Congress and announced a massive program of cuts and attacks on pensions and so forth. This was a shock for many people in uh, Spain. Even, even many ministers in his own government didn't know what he was going to say. They were also shocked. They, couldn't, uh, they were on TV, they were being asked about these cuts, they didn't know. What was uh, clearly revealed is the following. When it comes to the crisis of uh, capitalism, serious uh, recession, there's no room for reformism. You have only two options. Either you break with capitalism, or you forced to carry out massive uh, cuts in uh, social uh, welfare, pensions, uh, public sector pay, and so on. What, uh, what government is in power in Greece and Portugal? Social democratic uh, government. In, uh, in France, there is a conservative government, but the, the policies are exactly the same policies. Da down to the last uh, details. As I said, this was a big shock in, uh, in Spain. What did the trade unions uh, do? Trade union leadership in Spain was also very discredited. They had accepted everything that the government was saying up until that point. The excuse of, well, this is at least the government we can talk to, is not as bad as in France and so on. Now when the government became as bad as in France, they were forced to call a one-day general strike in September 29th. There were some problems with this general strike. First of all, the trade union uh, bureaucracy, the apparatus of the unions, was not used to calling uh, strikes. Many workers were highly skeptical and critical of the trade union uh, leadership for all the previous uh, sellouts. A section of workers was thinking, look, I mean, uh, unemployment is going from 2 million to 4 million at that uh, point. We can lose our jobs. Are we going to risk our jobs for a one-day general strike called by trade unions that are not even serious about fighting? So the general strike was successful. The sense that in the main, the main battalions of the working class came out on uh, strike paralyzed most of the country. A complete general strike. It wasn't a complete success. And what did the trade unions do after that, the trade union uh, leaders? Nothing. The, gov the government said, on the day of the strike, the government said, we're not going to make any concessions on these points. But if you want, we can talk about the reform of the pensions. They had not been even uh, mentioned at that time. So the union said, this is September 29th. The, un the trade union leader said, well, on December the 1st, I think it was December the 1st, there's a European uh, day of action. We'll have uh, demonstrations in all the regions in Spain. So, uh, I, mean, I mean, what kind of game is, uh, is this? I mean, the government is not only saying that they are not going to make any concessions, but now they're going to implement a reform of the pensions, i.e. lengthening the time that you need to work, lengthening the, the, the age of uh, retirement. And, and after one general strike, you call a day of demonstrations. The day of demonstrations was a complete flop, from which the trade union leaders drew the conclusion that, well, the workers don't want to fight. And in the meantime, there had been a massive wave of strikes in France, as you remember. Not, not normal strikes, but massive strikes with uh, mass uh, flying uh, pickets. A strike led from uh, below, not from above. The aim of paralyzing the economy. 
but the movement in France didn't achieve its uh, aims. So the trade union leaders in Spain, they said, well, I mean, if the French, with all their traditions, with the way they've been uh, fighting, haven't been able to stop this uh, pensions reform, what can we do in Spain where the workers don't even want to fight? So they decided to sign a deal with the Zapatero government about the pensions uh, reform. So after saying, we're not going to accept any of this, we're not going to accept the retirement age of 67, we're not going to accept, then they signed the deal all of a sudden, 24 hours, day after they were signing this uh, really bad uh, deal, a sellout with the uh, government. That was, that was another shock. In, in, this was in January this year. There were a, n a number of smaller left-wing unions and regional nationalist unions. They called for a day of strike at the end of uh, January, but that wasn't very strong. So it seemed like there's, there's nothing you can do. The, the political leaders that you have elected to carry out the left-wing policy are carrying out the same right-wing policy as the conservative government in France. The trade union leaders that are supposed to defend workers' rights, they're signing everything away uh, with the government. But then the Arab Revolution started. We, we should not underestimate the impact that that had on the, on the consciousness of millions of people in Spain. There, there were already some indications, for instance, in uh, Murcia, a region, uh, region in Spain. In, in Murcia, uh, there, was a right -wing, there is a right-wing uh, regional government, and they carried out particularly vicious uh, cuts. And there was a wave in December and January of big mass demonstrations in that one region. In uh, Catalonia, a right-wing government was elected, after uh, many years of a uh, 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 coalition of three, three left-wing left parties had been ruling the, the region. Uh, and this right-wing government, as soon as it came in, they thought, look, we've got the majority in the, opinion, in the, in the polls. We're now gonna we have a mandate to carry out these massive uh, cuts, particularly in health and education. And what happened was that the, <coughs> the reaction of the people was completely unexpected. The day that the cuts were announced in the health service, the two biggest, uh, <coughs> the two biggest hospitals in Barcelona walked out on a wildcat uh, strike and blockaded the main uh, roads and motorways outside the hospital. Teachers in schools all over Catalonia just walked out and uh, blockaded the roads outside the schools. So someone in this uh, context took the initiative of calling for this demonstration on May the 15th. There had been an earlier demonstration, I think it was on the 30th of uh, March, called by a, a, a new youth organization called Youth Without uh, Future. Uh, yeah. Sorry, Youth Without Fear. <laughs> youth without fear. Uh, well, I think, I think the slogan is, uh, we, have no, uh, we have no jobs, we have no future, we have no fear, or something like that. And uh, this demonstration was very uneven. In Madrid there were about 10, 15,000, which is not too bad. Uh, it's not a massive demonstration. But when this thing was announced on the 15th of May, nobody knew what was going to happen. In fact, mo most people didn't even know who was behind this uh, movement. Mm. And there were all sorts of conspiracy theories uh, before, during and after. The, posi the, position, the position of most of the official left commentators and intellectuals, academics and politicians and so on was, oh well, this is a very, very dangerous uh, movement because it's uh, apolitical. Because one, one of the organizations calling for this was called uh, Don't Vote for Them. But you have to understand, you have to understand, on top of this situation in, in Spain, you have a situation where there's massive uh, corruption in uh, politics, which comes together with the housing uh, bubble. Because if you want to build in a place where before it was uh, impossible to build, you have to pay a few councillors to change the qualification of that uh, land so you can build there and these councillors are going to get some uh, money and, and, uh, and there were even people who were getting into politics just to, to become councillors so they could change the qualification of land so they could build and there's a massive uh, corruption uh, acting mainly the right-wing popular party but also the socialist uh, party obviously it was a case for instance in the Madrid regional uh, elections uh, where the left won by a small margin but the right wing bought, literally bought, two uh, regional MPs for the Socialist Party to vote for the right wing, and they uh, came into power. And there, are, and there are literally hundreds, if not thousands, of people who are on trial for corruption that are still in the electoral lists that the different parties were presenting for these elections on, on when was the election? On, uh, well, in May. Uh, so it's not surprising that people hate these uh, politicians. 
there were a number of slogans to this uh, movement, the, the call for a demonstration on the 15th. One was real democracy now. The other one was we are not commodities at the hands of politicians and bankers. And the third one was on the 15th of May, take, take, <coughs> take to the streets. I'd say this is a very good uh, beginning. You're not only angry about something, you, you're going to do something about it. But as I said, the official left had a really bad attitude towards this uh, movement. Ooh, ooh, this, this movement with no, no parties, uh, no political organization, they can open the way for right-wing populism. And, uh, any, anybody could see that the people who were participating in this movement were left-wing. Yes, the, 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 the social base of the left-wing parties was the people who were in this uh, demonstration. On the 15th of May there were about maybe 40 demonstrations all over the country with maybe 160, 200,000 people in total, it's difficult to say. Complete, complete surprise to everybody, the organizers, the left-wing organizations, the trade unions, everybody was uh, taken by surprise by the size of this uh, movement. In Madrid there were maybe 30, 40,000. Um, Another significant point that is not, is not been uh, widely is not widely known is that the, the, the day before this demonstration on the 14th of May there was a big demonstration in Barcelona called by the trade unions against the cuts by the regional uh, government and it attracted 200,000 uh, people. You can see obviously that the traditional organizations of the working class, if they move, when they move, they can gather still uh, much larger numbers of uh, people than a few un unorganized or badly organized youth. The, the, the point is precisely the point is precisely that they are not moving. So anyway, this this was the beginning of the movement in uh, in Spain, and and then something happened. It's just an accidental uh, thing that happened. That a few people after the demonstration decided to stay and set up a tent camp in uh, in uh, Puerto del Sol, the main square in. in this was a small number of people, maybe two, three hundred. They didn't even set up tents because they said, well, if we set up tents, this is clearly illegal, we'll be removed in five minutes. So they just set up the sleeping bags and cardboard boxes and stuff. And they just stayed in the square. Now in Spain, any, any, any weekend, there are thousands of young people who buy uh, drinks and they just stay in the main squares in, uh, in the different uh, towns having a, a drink because it's too expensive to go to a bar or whatever. They socialize in the streets, they just have a drink. And the bourgeois media is always going on about the youth, that they don't want to work, they just want to have a drink and uh, get drunk on the weekends and blah, blah, blah. They never do anything. But now 300 youth decide to stay in, to stay in the square to discuss uh, politics, to protest and so on, and the police uh, intervenes brutally at three or four in the morning to remove uh, them from the square. And this was the accident that then brought another 10,000 people the day after to the square. He attempted to call a legal demonstration, legalize a demonstration for the 18th on the, on the Wednesday. Uh, and the demonstration was declared illegal. Listen to this, the reason was given by the electoral uh, junta, this, this was in the last week of the election campaign, because this was a political demonstration, it could influence the election results, therefore it was illegal. So you have a demonstration of people who, who are demanding real democracy and it, just in case there is any doubt that the democracy we have is not real, the demonstration is uh, completely banned because it's a political demonstration in the middle of an election campaign where people are supposed to be talking about uh, politics. 20,000 people came out on the square on that illegal the police. The police was there with orders to disband them, but they thought, well, maybe it's not the right uh, time, and they didn't. But think about this, 20,000 people who turned up, they knew that this demonstration was illegal, they, they knew that they could be disbanded by the, by the police. And there were now 160 towns and cities all over Spain where the movement was uh, going on. And then, uh, election Eve was uh, approaching, i.e. The, 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 the 12th midnight on the Friday was the beginning of the day before the election, where you're supposed to be thinking about the elections, but no uh, political uh, propaganda is allowed. So just to make sure, the electoral junta, national electoral junta, and the national government issued another statement uh, saying that this demonstration, any demonstrations on the Saturday were going to be illegal. And only this, but then uh, some people put uh, uh, an appeal to the Supreme Court or some higher court, not, not exactly the Supreme Court, the Supreme Tribunal for something, electoral or something. And the appeal was rejected, so everybody knew it was in all the papers. This is an illegal gathering. In Madrid, 40,000 people turned up, and in Barcelona, 20,000 people. 
they wanted to make sure that they were there at 12 midnight, Friday to Saturday, when the demonstration was becoming uh, illegal. This is quite uh, unprecedented if you think about it. This, these people are saying we don't care about bourgeois laws, we don't care about your police system, your, your justice system. We, we want to demonstrate, we demonstrate. And uh, what, what could the government do? Extremely unpopular government already for betraying its own social uh, base. One day before an election in which they're going to be massacred in the polls, they're not going to say, uh, well, the, po the police could have intervened and cleared the square quite uh, easily, but they didn't. And, and uh, Rubalcaba, who's the vice, uh, vice uh, prime minister, he said, uh, well, he was trying to find a, a way of saying, well, bourgeois law is still important. He said, well, these demonstrations are not allowed but as long as no uh, illegal acts of violence take uh, place, the police is the no uh, obligation to intervene. So that's what uh, happened. The police went to the square, delivered, uh, delivered a notice saying that uh, people there shouldn't be gathering. The people read this declaration through the loud uh, speakers. They all cheered and they stayed in the square. <laughs> <laughs> now, uh, obviously a movement, a movement like that Cannot, cannot last for forever, as you can uh, understand. And there's been a lot of conflicts within the movement, particularly between, this, uh, between people who say that we must adopt clear social and political uh, slogans if we want to, this movement to have massive uh, support. Right now, 80% of the population in opinion polls say that they support uh, this movement and that the causes for this movement are justified. Uh, but there's another section of the people in this uh, movement that say, no, we must keep our demands to the minimum common, common denominator so that we don't alienate uh, anybody, whether they are right wing or left wing or whatever. This movement should have no politics. And you, have, you have thousands of people going through the square, so one day a resolution is passed that calls for the expropriation of all the empty houses uh, that exist in Spain, one million empty houses. And the other day, a resolution is passed saying that only four points will be the demands of this movement. These four points are electoral reform, uh, no uh, corruption in politics, and, uh, and two other points that are equally saying uh, nothing. <laughs> Politicians should be honest. Uh, obviously, on the basis of these four points, there's no uh, movement because everybody will agree. And also, out, as, as it tends to happen, out of this assembly-like 200% uh, democratic uh, movement, a strong bureaucracy has emerged. In some places, for instance, there is a ban on distributing uh, leaflets, there is a ban coming uh, with political uh, banners, there is a ban on mentioning political uh, parties by the name. If you want to make a proposal to be voted by the assembly, first you have to go through the commission, the commission discusses this, if there is consensus, then you can uh, take it to the assembly, but the assembly needs to approve it as a point of the agenda for the following uh, day, etc., etc., etc. But uh, in many places where left-wing uh, militants or, or just common sense people get a little bit organized, they completely destroy with all this, uh, destroy all this uh, rubbish. There was a really funny one that I saw. There's a video on, on YouTube of an intervention at the assembly in uh, Valencia. And this woman uh, says, look, I'd like to read this uh, declaration. And she said, uh, but we cannot mention political parties. We are against political party peep and political party peep. <laughs> <laughs> we want the trade unions peep to represent us. And instead of the trade union leaders peep and peep signing an agreement with the government, we want them to fight for our rights. <laughs> And now, since these points cannot be voted in this uh, assembly, this resolution that I'm proposing, uh, what I would like is to ask you a question. And this question has three possible uh, answers. Do you agree with this uh, resolution? Yes, no, abstention. <laughs> and the people just uh, voted in favor of, uh, of this, and they, they completely destroyed the ban on mentioning political parties, discussing <laughs> politics, and so on. Okay. So obviously, this, this movement has its uh, weaknesses in, in the, the lack of uh, clarity, the, the, the very weak organizational forms, <coughs> and the fact that so far it hasn't linked up with the organized uh, trade union uh, movement yet. But it has an enormous uh, significance. In many assemblies, they created a, a 
uh, trade union workers uh, movement uh, commission that is going to industrial uh, areas, workplaces, leafleting and uh, talking to people. They've called for new demonstrations on the 19th of uh, June and these are definitely going to be a mass demonstration. And now what's happened is that uh, at the negotiation uh, table between the bosses, the government and the trade unions, where the, where the bosses and the government se uh, wanted to negotiate the abolition of collective bargaining uh, agreements and they wanted the unions to sign for this. But finally they made, they made such an outrageous uh, proposal that the trade union leaders couldn't sign and part of the reason is because of the movement that's taking place in the streets. So the, the, the trade unions couldn't do anything but walk out of the negotiations and they now call for mobilizations. Uh, but as always with the trade union uh, bureaucracy, when they're forced to do something they don't really want to do it, they organize it in such a way as it's not going to be successful. So they said, mm, on the 22nd of uh, June there is a European uh, day of action of the trade union. <laughs> Nobody's heard uh, of. It seems it will consist in a demonstration in Luxembourg. So they said in Spain we're going to call also regional demonstrations in all the provincial capitals. Well, we'll see what happens because in this context these demonstrations might acquire some uh, significance. This is basically what, what is uh, happening in, in Spain. Situation in, in, in Greece the situation is much worse because the economic crisis is much deeper. If it's deep in Spain, it is even much deeper in, uh, in Greece. It's not only that Greece has not come out of the recession yet, is that the, the economy is, is likely to fall more this year than it fell uh, last year. And uh, I can't remember the exact figure, but they just revised the figure of, uh, of economic uh, the forecast, economic forecast for Greece this year. I think they're saying that it's going to fall by 4.1%. But who can be surprised about this? When, uh, one year ago, when uh, the European Union bailed out uh, Greece, it wa wasn't really a bailout of uh, Greece, as we explain in, in a minute. But anyway, they, they gave they gave Greece or the Greek government all that uh, money. There, there were a number of conditionalities. Massive cuts in uh, retirement, uh, in pen the pension system, cuts in the pay of uh, workers in the public sector, reduction of number of workers in the public sector, reduction of services, massive cuts in public spending. And now uh, you have an economy that's in recession. And then you withdraw all this massive amount of money from the economy. The workers don't have the same amount, have less money to pay for, to buy uh, goods. Uh, some of them lost their jobs and uh, the government is not spending any money. What's the result going to be? The economy is going to go even further down. The hope uh, was that by massively cutting uh, the production costs in uh, Greece, i.e. lowering uh, workers' wages and, and so on, then Greece could export its products cheaper to other countries and maybe start uh, recovering. But the reports from the first quarter of this year say that even exports have gone down in relation to the previous uh, year. The situation is one where basically Greece cannot and will not pay this uh, debt. I think, it, I think it now represents 160% of uh, GDP. But the problem is uh, who owns uh, this uh, debt? That's who are the creditors? On the one hand, <coughs> on the one hand is the Greek uh, banks, but also a large amount of this is, is uh, owned by French mainly and also German uh, banks. And what they really worried is that if Greece says we're not going to pay these uh, debts, then this will cause serious problems for French and uh, German uh, banks. But not only the problems it will cause immediately as a direct result, but also because of the domino effect. Because if the Greeks say we're not going to pay our debts, then who's to say that the Irish are not going to say we're not going to pay our debts, and the Portuguese are going to say we're not going to pay our debts, and, uh, and then the ball becomes uh, bigger and bigger. So the so-called uh, Troika, which is composed of the European Central Bank, the European uh, Commission and, uh, and, uh, and who else? And the IMF. They don't want to let the Greeks even have a haircut, which means that, uh, not a haircut, which means that instead of paying the debts uh, now, they're going to have some uh, longer period and better conditions for paying the debts. Uh, some, some of the banks uh, that owe this money, they they quite uh, keen on, on this uh, haircut situation, the restructuring or rescheduling of the debt. And in fact, The Economist, main uh, bourgeois newspaper, is in favor of that. They've been saying that for many months. Because what they're thinking is, it's better to get some money 
than to get no money at all, which is the real situation. But this is not just an economic question, no, as, as we can see. It is also a political uh, question. We already see in Germany, there's a lot of uh, problems with all these uh, bailouts. Because people are starting to say, why should we bail out, uh, bail out uh, Greece? And if these this countries are in problems, well, uh, let them sort themselves uh, the problems. What is becoming uh, clearer, <laughs> also for the German uh, ordinary working people, is that in reality all this is, no, not because of Greece, but it's because of German uh, banks that all this, uh, that what they're bailing out is German banks. So the whole process of the working out of the crisis, the, eco the economic recession, uh, through the financial system and uh, through the government debt and so on, is now becoming clear uh, and apparent, transparent to the eyes of millions of people, not only in the countries that are more affected, Greece, Spain, Portugal, uh, Ireland and so on, but also in the countries that are not so affected by, by it, not so directly affected. And the process is like this, there's an economic boom which has a strong component of speculation, massive expansion of uh, credit, uh, lowering, lowering of uh, interest uh, rates uh, to minimum uh, levels. So for, for many years, for maybe two decades, the, the capitalists were worried about the recession being very serious recession with serious political and, econo and social uh, implications and they used all the methods possible to prevent that uh, recession. The recession uh, hits about three years uh, ago. It first uh, hits the banks and uh, when they uh, finally decided to go to Syntagma Square, they organized a trade union demonstration, a few thousand people, they went to Syntagma Square. The banks that have uh, lent all this money, uh, open doors, you want some money, take some more. And now uh, the, the taxpayers, ordinary working people, are uh, asked to pay so that the banks are safe. This was two years ago. In Britain, for instance, effectively three out of the five main uh, banks are being uh, nationalized. Politicians, right-wing and left-wing politicians, they say, well, this is necessary so that the whole economy doesn't go down and uh, well we have to have some austerity but this will not last for very long and then we'll come out of this. The following step is that because we saved the banks we now accumulated all this uh, public uh, debt. The government has no money for pensions, for education, for health care and therefore we need more austerity. People start to think, look, we, 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 this crisis is not of our making. This crisis was caused, this is not, not not really the case, but this is the public perception is the crisis was caused by some uh, reckless uh, bankers. We now paid for the bankers and uh, now we are asked to pay again. And they made a speech, the content of which can be summarized in, in Greece particularly. One year ago they already said, look, we must implement this massive austerity package, but at the end of one year the government will be able to start paying its debt back and the situation will be improved. There will be economic growth, on the basis of economic growth we can uh, again pay for all the social uh, welfare measures. Saying you feel betrayed because you voted, you voted for PASOK of the new democracy and they carrying out uh, cuts. One year later, uh, politicians turn to the people and say, well, listen, the situation is even worse, worse than it was one year ago. And now in Greece, you also had the situation of a block in the political uh, front and in the trade union uh, front. In the political front, the people had kicked out the new democracy right-wing uh, government and elected uh, PASOK. But that, but that didn't change anything. The PASOK is the one that's carrying out all these uh, policies. Yes. And in the trade union front, yes, the, the trade unions have called, I think it's 11 general strikes in, uh, in a year and a half. But most workers are already saying, well, what's the point? You call, one, you call one general strike, this is a serious militant uh, general strike. But it's clear that that's not enough to stop the, the government, uh, the cuts, the austerity program. So what do you do? You call another general strike, no. then another one, and no. then another one, until you've called 11. And people don't care about general strikes anymore. They don't see that this uh, fulfills any concrete uh, purpose of uh, stopping the government. They, they've tried it 11 times, it hasn't worked, why should we keep uh, doing the same thing? And that's also where this movement uh, comes uh, from. Mm. Movement that has developed very quickly into a massive uh, movement. On Sunday, there were hundreds of thousands, su last Sunday, there were hundreds of thousands in the streets of uh, Athens and, uh, and similar and, and others in, uh, in other towns and cities around the country.
I mean, the official uh, newspapers in uh, the official media in uh, in Greece talk about 200,000 uh, uh, people. Some people say half a million were in in Athens alone. That's a lot of people, five, half a million uh, people, or even if it was only 300, 400,000. And there is this very strong uh, feeling in, uh, in Greece, as, as there was in Spain, but much stronger in uh, Greece, that we, we are asked to pay for all this, this massive austerity package. We don't have a say. And there's an unelected uh, troika in uh, somewhere, in Brussels or in Frankfurt or, or in uh, Washington, that decides about uh, the sell-off of all of the public uh, property in Greece, 50 billion uh, euro worth of uh, privatizations. We can't even say uh, anything. There were elections in uh, Portugal on uh, Sunday, but it doesn't really matter who you elect, because the austerity package has already been signed with the European uh, Commission uh, the week before the elections take place. I think it's 78 billion euros worth of uh, cuts. This massive austerity package has been, has been agreed and signed before the elections take place. What's, what's the point of the elections? There's no point. There's no point. Whoever, whatever party you elect, the, the, the austerity package and policy will be the same. Normal times, bourgeois democracy at least has the appearance of being uh, democratic. You, you're supposed to have a choice. But what's increasingly clear for, for hundreds of thousands, for millions of uh, people is that in reality there's two things. One, that, that uh, at the end of the day is bankers, unelected bankers and capitalists who decide over the important questions. And that it doesn't matter what that all political parties are basically the same. In some cases they are even in a coalition carrying out the same uh, policies. This is what they would like to get in Greece. It's not clear that they can uh, get it because popular anger is so strong. And now think about uh, this for a minute. In, in Greece there were half a million people in Sintagma Square last uh, weekend. There are now uh, people's, uh, assembly, people's Assembly is meeting every day in Sintagma Square with maybe five, ten thousand people discussing politics, discussing the next steps of the movement and uh, so on. They are creating uh, People's Assemblies in the neighborhoods. And then sometime at the end of this month or beginning of next month, uh, the government has got, to, has got to put this austerity package to uh, Parliament. And the people have committed themselves that this will not be allowed to happen that they will blockade, that they will physically blockade Parliament the day before so that no one can get into Parliament to vote these uh, measures. What does this uh, remind you of? No. Uh, and the main slogan of all this is they should all go. This remind you of other than uh, Argentina in uh, 2000, 2000, 2001. It's not yet at that uh, level because no government has fallen, but just, uh, just wait. You could see I mean, it's, uh, it's difficult to predict, but you could see a situation where a European bourgeois democratic uh, government is overthrown by the streets, no, no. by mass action of people in the streets. Mm -hmm. that, means, that means a lot of things. It's got revolutionary implications. For starters, it means that people don't think that they can wait until there's elections to change the government, that they have to change the government now, and that the way to do it is through revolutionary action in the streets. In reality, if you think about it, Greece is only the most advanced country in Europe, most advanced from the point of view of the severity of the economic crisis, from the point of view of the severity, therefore, of the political and social uh, crisis, but it's part of a chain. If you want, it's the weakest chain of European uh, capitalism. So uh, this has got uh, a lot of uh, implications, obviously. But my, la my last, very last point is this. If, uh, if Greece is not yet in a revolutionary situation, it's only because of the complete failure of all the left-wing uh, parties and tendencies to, to give a, a channel to this uh, movement.